Hey friends. Whoa, geez, that's hot. <laughs> I think we should turn the heat down a little bit. It is warm in here. Let me tell you, um, my phone was overheating. <laughs> it was getting so hot. Still working on Hogan's saw, putting the finishing touches on it. Um, I like to be super thorough. I don't know. If you send a saw to a guy and it's no good, I can't live life like that. Um, there's a few little issues that this saw has. Nagging issues, I call them. They're just little things. They're not the worst deal in the world, but they're stuff that I have to fix while this saw is in my possession. You guys know I changed the trigger assembly in the last video by just swapping the tank. I had tried polishing and smoothing the parts, but for whatever reason the trigger on the old tank, it just, it was, it was catching all the time. Not all the time, but every hundredth time you pull the trigger, the, the saw would just pin and you'd either have to shut it down or, or sometimes the trigger would come back. So can't live life like that. Now, where is it here? I gotta find, just give me a second here friends, I'm gonna pause you. I gotta find the chain break that was on this saw. Okay, here's the chain break that was on this saw, right here. Okay. Let you guys see this. Okay, and you guys were correct, a couple of you mentioned this is a newer style. Okay. This is a newer style full wrap for one of these. And again, I'll show you my saw. Where is it here? In a sea of orange, this one. Okay, this is my saw. My saw has the original 266 style full wrap. This was sent to me by a nice fella uh, from BC. See how the wrap, they butt in the middle and they join, right? These ones go this way and that way. This is probably a better setup, stronger. But again, if you look at where the wrap sits on the saw, okay, friends? This wrap is center of where the, the yellow decal is here. This wrap is at the back of it. And again, that will change the balance of the saw. I actually like this wrap better with a long bar. Um, or, or, sorry, I like this wrap better with a light bar on because it seems to balance nicely. Okay, because it's further forward, that changes the balance of the saw. I had to do a voiceover here. I got it backwards. My saw is better with a lighter bar because the handle is further back. Hogan saw is better, or either or, but with a heavier bar, Hogan saw balances because the handle is further forward. But here's the problem, friends. This has the old style metal chain brake on it, okay? Look at the gap from here to here, okay? On this saw. This is the stuff that I spend my life dealing with. And uh, I like this saw, this saw is cool. <laughs> Let's see if we put it back on the shelf. These are the little things that make a work saw a work saw. And I know I keep driving that home, but there just seems to be so much confusion out there online about what a work saw actually is. Well, a work saw is a saw that a guy takes to work with him every day. Just like friends, um, I run, and I'll show you guys, I'm a tinsmith, sheet metal worker. I run these 20 volt XR brushless, okay? You guys notice I run my drill, this is a spare drill. Okay, it's got the metal, it's got the metal, um, chuck on it, okay? I don't run my impact in the shop of this series. The reason why is those brushless impacts, they're a little too quick and make a little too much power. You can break bolts of them. I run those friends, those brushless XRs. Those are expensive. Those are a pro level tool. I run hundreds and hundreds of screws in a day, about 10 to 12,000 screws a month I install at work. <laughs> My idea of an impact and drill combo is probably going to be far um, more powerful, quicker, longer battery life, more power, just all that stuff because I live on with a drill in my hand. Like I have a drill in my hand and, and, and have for the last 20 years, 10, 12 hours a day, friends. So it's the same thing with a work saw. Now, moving forward, 
I'm not sure why. At first I was like, oh, I'll just throw a new style chain brake on. Well, a new style chain brake doesn't fit on this wrap, okay? This is the new style chain brake. Notice it's been ground here. Here's the problem, friends. This chain brake does not reset on this saw. And look how close it is to your hand. I don't know how big Hogan's mitts are, but they're gonna get bigger as time goes because he's working with them all day, but I got big mitts, friends. When I first ran this saw, I couldn't even fit my hand in there, okay? Now, if you if you trip this, you can't get it off. I couldn't get it off the saw. So, I started with, I started running one of these. Again, these are always broken. This one's broken. But, I started by running one of these, friends. Well, even the old style chain brake, which usually gives you a little more room, doesn't fit. So, what did I do? I heated it up. I put it in my vise, okay, and I bent it forward. So now, I'm going to turn this around. Now there's room for a gloved hand in there. These are pretty stiff usually. You could adjust the preload on them too, okay? This is perfect, okay? I'm, I'm super happy. If my hand fits in there, most people's hands will. There are guys with bigger mitts than me, but, um, okay, so... What, what am I doing today? Well, I'm painting Hogan's pipe. I got it drying. It's hanging up over the oven, aka the fireplace behind me. This is the pipe for Hogan's saw. And uh, I use I use uh, a ceramic coating that you have to bake on. So it's 400 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna, and again, this will be fine. I can send him this one, but it's ugly, friends. This one, is way nicer looking. So what am I gonna do today? I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna take this chain brake assembly off and I'm gonna put this one on that I've curved a little bit, okay? And give them, just give them a nice, nicer chain brake. These are getting really hard to find. Um, I may have a few more in my stocks, but they're, they're getting to be hard to find. So if I could help him out, because at the end of the day, uh, a chain brake's a good thing to have. You don't want to be using it all the time when you're cutting because that means you're probably doing something unsafe. But let's face it, friends, once in a while, a chain brake can save you. So anyhow, I'm going to get this polished up here and uh, we'll start taking this apart and I'll show you guys how I change these. I haven't done one in a while, so it might be Fumble Fingers Day, but uh, I'll get set up here and let's see if we can get this happening. Okay, I took the first one apart in the name of time, okay? Now, these springs are different than the new style springs. So you, if you're, if you if you have one of these old style saws, and again, if you have a decomp on your saw, these don't work, these old style chain brakes. They actually cover and hit the decomp. But if you, if you have an old style chain brake and the brake band, I always call this a spring. It is a spring, it's spring steel, but you guys get the idea. If the brake band is broken, you're probably gonna have to buy a used one and swap it, okay? Now again, I like the body of this saw, of this cover, but I don't, the chain brake's broken, right? Which is very common with these. So, first thing I do, okay? Take the adjustment wheel off, this one is stuck. Okay, and if these are stuck, don't put a pair of vice grips on there or anything. There's a hole through it. Use a screwdriver or whatever. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is undo the adjuster. And all I'm going to do is I am going to take the best parts from both of these and make one out of them. Okay, undo the adjuster. Then there is the top nut. This holds the spring in. And I'm going to try and do this the best that I can on video. And again, this is stuck. I'll just get it back. Okay, undo this. Okay, now is where it gets fun, okay? Inside, see if I can, there we go. Inside this contraption, and I'm going to reset it. Inside this contraption, there's a bunch of little pins. There's a pin here, okay? There's a pin here, a pin there, another pin here, okay? 
and a screw here. You have to take all that apart. Um, it's really hard to have the exact punches or, or what have you. So, you know, you may have to rig something up to get that happening. Okay, so I'm going to start driving these off camera and then I'll show you guys as I go which ones I took out. And actually, the way I do these a lot of the time, I'll get it started with a punch. You got to punch these on an angle. Okay, there's this pin here that holds the end of the spring in. Oh, and this one came out. The last one fought me. So, okay. Little roll pin. Put that there. And then there's this tiny wee little pin here. You probably don't have a punch that size. I'm actually using a little tiny wee T-handle. Let's see if I can do this on video. Show you guys. Again, I, I enjoy making this kind of content because this is the real world stuff that you guys are going to encounter if you want to work on old saws. Okay, it started with, with that punch. Okay, so there's that. Now, this is still under tension, but look, I can undo that now, okay? Now, on the other side, there's a roll pin here and a screw there, okay? So same thing. Punch this out. This has tension on it, and you can see. Came out the other side. I'm probably gonna use most of the parts from this chain brake cover. There we go, okay. It just went pop. And now here, there's a screw here. If I can get at it. Just like everything else on an old saw, it's full of mung. So when my bench is dirty, friends, I, there's, it's rare I get a clean saw in here. Okay, I'm gonna put a little heat on this before I strip it. Okay, I just applied a little heat to it. There we go. Again, with a lot of this stuff, just take your time because some of this stuff is hard to find. Okay, now this threads into the back here. If you want to get it started, screw that in just a little bit and go like this. Okay, see that? That's how I do it, and then you pop it out. Otherwise, these can be stuck sometimes. Okay, and then the other side. Again, take my punch, flat side down, boom. Okay, now these parts are gonna be under spring pressure. Okay, here's your handle. This piece goes into there. There's a spring underneath it. Pull your spring off. And pull this out. Don't forget to put this this little bushing on here, the nylon bushing that it rides on. Okay, I'm gonna clean parts and then we will put this handle into this chamber. Okay, I got my cover here. This piece here, I start by doing that. The end of this goes into the end of this spring here. That's what keeps your handle from flopping around. It puts a little spring tension on it, okay? Line it up with the hole. I already got the pin in here. This is the stuff I did before I ever ported saws, friends. I got, I got proficient in making saws run. Then that's when I started. There you go, making them go fast. This is more important than porting, way more. You can have the best ported saw in the world. If it don't start, run, idle, chain break works, screws not falling out, etc. Um, your saw is going to sit on the bench. Believe me. Okay. I got this bushing here. I picked this band. This is a solid band. This is a slotted band. I prefer these solid bands. They're the newer style. I believe these tend to kink. See how that one's kinked there versus that. So I'm going to give Hogan the solid band. Okay. Now. This is the part I usually, I, I screw it up a little bit. Okay, I put this through there. Okay, weave it through there. Put this there, spring. There's a little, there's this bushing, don't forget that, or this spring can bind up. Put the spring on there, okay? Now, take this. 
take this, okay, drop it over, and just snug it up with that little screw that's on the top, the one that we took out, okay? Just do that. If you don't do that, you're not gonna be able to put this thing back together, okay? Because as you can see, there's a big spring on here and it's got a ton of tension on it, okay? That's what we have. Now the hardest part here, the hardest part, and I'm probably not gonna be able to do this on video, I have to push this down to get these bushings installed, okay? Our brake clean just took a just took a ride. Just took a little bit of a ride. Okay. You guys see what I'm doing here? You have to push this down. See, and I'll get it off camera, of course. But you have to push it down and let's see if I can get this on video. Sorry, friends. I may cut some of this out, but you guys get the idea, okay? You got to push preload on this spring and go. Okay, and get that bushing in there. I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay, put the bushing in. You guys see that? It's all held together right now. But see, it's not in the right spot. Now, again, these bushings are stepped. I'm gonna push this together with my left hand. Okay, but look, it's still not seated all the way. Okay, I got this started, but look, it still doesn't fit, right? The bushing won't seat. So what do I do? I grab this and I go, click, reset it. Now look, now suddenly you get all kinds of room to play with. You guys see that? It moves. If you don't do that, you will fight with this for a long time. Okay, just trying to get this seated. Of course, I got the screw in there, which makes it even harder, but that's how these things are. They're kind of, they're kind of fumbly. Okay, and I'll just keep wiggling this until I get it to seat. See, that bushing's not in there all the way. So you can't really beat on it to try and make it move. So you got to kind of wiggle it and get it to pop in. And there we have it. They're both seated. Take your Allen screw or your Allen key. Okay. And look, this thing popped into place on its own while I was messing with it. Take this little pin here, just tiny wee. Don't lose it because you'll have a hard time finding one this size. I mean, you might, but. Okay, get that started in the hole. This is one of two pins that keeps this band from coming out. I think I got a mouse running around in here. Funny story. Okay. Here's one. And then this last pin goes through here. There's a hole, there's a hole in the end. Take that pin, get it started and drive it in. Okay, and there's what that pin looks like. And then last but not least, put your adjuster back in. These can fall out if if it's loose. Oh, weird. I think I got it in the wrong hole. There's actually two holes. There you go, screw that in. Beautiful. Okay, let's see how this fits on the saw. I hope hope that helps some of you guys. I remember the first time I had to do one of these, particularly these ones. There's a lot of little pins and levers and linkages and it can be a little frustrating. Okay, here's the finished product. Just like that. Okay, lots of room.
Perfect. Okay, so there you guys go. It's all about the odds and sods of these old saws. I love working on them. They are definitely labor intensive. You guys get the idea? Sometimes you gotta dig in. I don't like doing those because they're uh, they're definitely a little bit of a bear to get apart and put back together. But uh, I mean, I've never had one that I can't get back together, but you guys get the idea. Um, just take your time, really pay attention to where all those pins go, and then try and figure out how the machine works and where you need to apply force. And it should go back together. Again, if this is my saw, I can't live life with a chain break that if it set, if it trips, I literally, friends, I tripped the chain break on this thing the first time I ran it. That was it. I had to come back to the shop and take the side cover off. Oh, this thing's nice. So I can't live life like that. That's just not how I, that's not how I roll. So anyhow, friends, next time you see this saw, I'll probably be packing it up. Um, I don't think I'm really going to put much in the way of time on this saw. Um, it's given me no trouble. Piston's starting to break in nicely. And uh, I really don't see any issues with it. I think it'll just keep breaking in. In, uh, in a month or two, if you look at this piston, it'll be shiny and, and broken in. Um, right now, there's a few little lines on it, but that's totally normal, friends. When you pour a saw, often you'll get those little faint, little fine marks on them. It's heavy scoring that goes through the rings and stuff like that. That's what you want to worry about. So if you pour a saw and there's little tiny wee minute scratches on the first couple tanks, that's just everything, uh, that's just everything coming together. And uh, again, though, if you have major scratches or a big gouge, uh, you should take that saw back apart because it's probably going to grenade. Um, this, thing's, this thing's starting to break in nicely, so... Um, these things take a while. With a new piston, cylinder, bearings, and all that, it definitely takes a while for your compression to come up where it's going to be. Um, I usually think around 10 tanks, maybe, if you're if you're bucking and, and actually working the saw. It'll be good at 3 or 4 tanks, but I think about 10, 12 tanks of use is where a saw really shows its potential of where it's going to be. I find the more you use these, the better and better they get. Um... I've had saws back in my shop that I built a while ago and when they left here they sure didn't have compression like they do now and those saws could have hundreds of hours on them so um, I think this thing just needs to be run and used. Anyhow friends, there may be more after this. I may throw uh, a little bit of that pipe in depending on how long this video is but there you guys go. I think this thing's done other than, other than finishing the paint on the pipe. Um, the saw runs good. I've had no issues with it. It idles, it starts. It's just a good work saw. And uh, I'm hoping Hogan gets many, many years of use out of this thing. Anyhow, friends, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Later.